What allows you to access your joy reserves? I think we all possess joy. It's just that stuff going on sometimes restricts our access to it. To some, joy can come from the arts, music, graphic, dance, etc. Joy can so overwhelm me sometimes that it causes me to lose track of everything else that's going on in my life, right or wrong. I can see joy as similar to an athlete being in the zone, or in a more academic description, Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi's Flow, from a book by that name. I highly recommend it. Flow. Sometimes I can predict its onset. I came here to be enthralled, like a Jorma Conkenden concert. But often it just catches me by surprise. A baby's look. Sounds of spring in a quiet wood, or the roar of a 400 horsepower, purpose-built rally car at 115 miles an hour on a one-lane gravel road. What, you ask? How can that possibly bring you joy? Well, it's the music of the form of motorsport I've been associated with for over 50 years, rallying. There are so many levels of joy produced by a good rally weekend, it's hard for me to even identify them, but here are a few. The top competitors of the field of one of our rallies are both dancers and musicians. Imagine a ballet dancer balanced on toe while singing opera. That's a rally driver at top speed, balancing the physics of speed, gravity, and friction, leaving the car barely under control while the engine screams at the top of its lungs. It's a song that can send shivers up and down my spine. And then there's the beauty of the places these events are conducted. Needing fairly primitive one to one and a half lane wide gravel roads to race on, we find ourselves communing with nature before and after the competition in some of the country's most beautiful rural settings. Amazing how nature accommodates the violent frenzy of racing and the idyllic beauty of emerging spring in the Ozarks. And thirdly, well-functioning teams always bring me great joy, and our events abound with them. The relationship between the calm co-driver delivering rapid-fire information and his driver at over 100 miles an hour to eke at maximum performance out of the weekend's effort is one example. And each event has an organization that safely conducts these rallies. They, too, are well-oiled machines. At this past weekend's Rally in the 100-Acre Wood, I can't say I've ever seen an organizing team better prepared or function more flawlessly in my 50 years. No event goes off without a hitch, and this weekend was no exception. We had broken cars and broken radio repeaters, so communications failed sometimes. Things to knock the event off schedule all attacked as the event progressed. But this team, assembled over the past 10 years or so, is so professional they handle it all with smiles and an eagerness to excel. Patrick Lencioni wrote the book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. It's another book I recommend, by the way. These dysfunctions, Lenzi only posits, are generated with challenges with trust, conflict, commitment, accountability, and results. This 100-acre wood leadership team lacks nothing in any of these areas, and they didn't even study the book. For four days, this team coordinated events and hundreds of people to make safe the nail-biting competition for 90 cars in the Ozark foothills of eastern central Missouri. A well-functioning team is a beautiful thing to watch. This weekend's execution gave me goosebumps. A true joy to behold. Joy. I can find some pretty weird places to access mine, can't I? It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.